congratulations. It's great to see you again here. Tony, it's like you're having with Scandal, and now this movie, this sort of uh, career resurgence. Do you feel that way? And uh, did you read the book, both of you, and talk about your characters compared in the movie compared to the book? Um, yes, yes, and uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's been, it's been a great year, a few years, um, doing all you know, all kinds of new momentum in, terms, in all different ways, I mean, work-wise, which has been really exciting. Um, and um, talk, what was the second part, Stephen? The, the, talk about the characters. I had read the book. Oh, okay. And the characters, um, you know, similar to the book, I'd say that uh, Neil Berger, in, in developing the book into a screenplay, really um, fleshed out some of the secondary characters even more than, than what's in the book. So, for example, Andrew, my character, um, I, 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 you know, he, the, the, I guess he took a strong point of view on Andrew, where I think you have a lot of compassion and connection to our family, um, so, uh, which is really useful in telling the story. I think that at least when I saw the movie, I felt very connected to Triss's family, Caleb and, and um, is that just really connected to Ansel? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's quite similar, but but um, Neil's really created a world that is really three dimensional and wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that. Yeah. Did you, did you write the book? And um, I mean, I read it after I got cast in the store. I think we all read it because um, you know, when every any time as an actor you have that kind of source material, it's like really helpful um, in in terms of fleshing out your character. But yeah, I mean. I agree with Tony. The the world is really three dimensional. Um, it's impressive because to have this kind of movie, it's the first in a series. So you have to introduce the whole world. Do you have to introduce all the factions? You have to introduce all the characters, and then you have to tell a story on top of that. So um, the way that they achieve that is much better than I expected them to have because it, they did a perfect job. Is it the same art then? In the first book for you, that you see Caleb yeah. in the movie, where he goes and yeah, sort of says, I'm sorry. I yeah, should. fashion before blood. Yeah. yeah, and then he comes back and, he, and he's, you know, I, I didn't realize that this was going to happen, and he starts to have regret, and then, you know, what happens? It's very faithful. The whole movie's very faithful. Yeah. But, yeah. They, they did a perfect job because they cut out things that you don't need, and um, th that way, because if you have too many things going on, then, uh, then you can't really tell the story and you can't flush out the right characters, but they cut out some characters and then maybe they'll flush them out later. Um, I'm sure some of you guys know who the character is that they cut out, but maybe they'll flush them out later. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah. Okay, thank you. Hi, um, can you tell us who was the best or most natural fighter on set and who was like the clumsiest or had the toughest time? <laughs> See, we're we're abnegation. Like things were in abnegation. Yeah. <laughs> there was no fighting. No Very fighting, little. You know, no fighting in our abnegation. It's like any of the other, yeah. any of the other um, um, I'm guessing, I mean, by the looks of him, I'd say Jai. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to mess with Jai just because naturally he seems like a... And him and Theo, I, I don't want to mess with. Yeah. You're coming into an established story, an established franchise and you are super involved on social media. And so what has that reception been like from fans? What have you been hearing and receiving? It's been amazing. I mean, I just, I, it's like a few months ago, I was just, a, you know, I, I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> it's so nice, you know? It's, uh, but that's, that's because of the stories, you know? It's like, I was saying, I would, every time I go to one of these uh, screenings, you know, there are people screaming and stuff, and they say, how does it feel for everyone to be screaming for you? And um, I say, well, if I was just here um, as a fan, people wouldn't be turned toward me and screaming. It's not because of me, it's because of the story. You know, people are obsessed with the story. People are obsessed with the other story that I'm a part of. And, um, you know, it's, I just am lucky enough to be a part of it. Tony, you and Ashley had some uh, tough scenes together watching um, Caleb and Tris leave, move factions. Did you, when you guys were shooting that scene, were you drawing from experiences of like, what would this be like, my own kids leaving me? Like, what was going through your head when you were filming this? Yeah, it was one of the reasons I, I really connected to this material. Uh, you know, I think Veronica's book really resonates both with young adult readers, but adults as well. Because I have young daughters, 
um, well, actually, Tris's age, you know, mm -hmm. and um, so the idea of being separated from my kids for life, um, it's your worst nightmare. So, yes, for sure, it really, that was an easy one to mm -hmm. think about. Hi, I'm Cassandra, and I was wondering, in the movie, the dystopian society forces characters into different factions and characters are forced to conform. So I was wondering, in your life, in this industry or in real life in general, how do people perceive you in a way that isn't true to who you really are? Is that for? For both of you. Both. Um, well, I'll take that first. Um, you know, I think we all, as people, can relate to the idea of being uh, sort of bot pigeonholed <laughs> in one thing. Um, or, or, you know, and, and we struggle in life to be seen and to be known and to connect with other people, and we're all multifaceted. So the notion of being, you know, one thing, we just naturally chafe against. And certainly in our industry, you know, particularly if you have, I mean, I've experienced having commercial success in one kind of a character, <coughs> And for years, you know, that's, that's what you do. Um, and, and you spend a lot of energy kind of trying to branch out or break away. Uh, and, and I found, um, you know, career-wise, the most satisfaction in my career, and I think the reason I'm still around, is because I've constantly mixed that up and gone, no, 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 I'm not necessarily that guy. There's also this facet. And to explore, to keep it alive, but you kind of have to break the chains of, of what is familiar. So, um, uh, but I think it's just such a human thing, which is why one of the reasons Veronica's book and this movie, I think, are you know, so resonant. Yeah, I mean, for me, I right away I'm trying not to only play like a leading man kind of character. That's why I like Caleb is awesome for me to play. Uh, he's not the leading man because you know you can easily be pigeonholed in this industry, but also in life. You know, I think that is actually one nice thing about being an actor, though, is that ideally you're able to play a lot of different characters and. Be different people all the time, and uh, as human beings, we I think we all strive to sort of be divergence. <laughs> uh, hi, um, I was just wondering, uh, since film is such a collaborative media, how much of a force was Veronica on? Was she on set? Did did she give you any insight into your characters? Um, she, we almost never overlapped. It just like didn't work out that way. I don't know why. Um, but I, I know that I was just on a press tour with her, so I've heard her answer this question, so I'm going to sort of answer it for her, I guess. She said a lot that she didn't really want to, you know, put her hands into the pot too much, and, you know, you let Neil and the producers do their, do their work. But uh, when we were on our tour, we talked a lot about Caleb and where he goes and, you know, things that, that and that's helpful because you have the person who created him there. So that, that's, that's awesome. And Tony? I, you know, uh, I got the same impression on set. You know, she, she was there for a few days when I was there. Um, she was lovely and supportive and really excited to be there. I mean, Veronica's, how old is Veronica's like 25? She's out of college, you know. So <laughs> to her, th this whole process was new. And yet, she, you felt very much that she was supportive and very connected to the, the process as well. Because I've been involved in other things where a novelist will come to set and they feel very much like a visitor, you know. Who, who, but. Uh, so she felt very, really a part of it, but I didn't sense that she was, um, you know, she seemed very humble about it, I would say. Yeah. Okay, we have time for one more question. Uh, Tony, uh, my question is for you. Um, was it nice reuniting with Ashley Judd all these years after mm -hmm. Kiss the Girls and playing her husband as opposed to a serial killer trying to torture her? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was fun, actually. Um, yeah, you know, Ashley and I have worked together three or four times. I was, it, one of my first movies was the movie she got her SAG card on. Uh, called? It was called Cuffs. <laughs> Christian Slater and me and Ashley, I think, had one line. And then we did Kiss the Girls, and then I directed her in a movie called Someone Like You, a romantic comedy. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, I feel like there was something else. But anyway, so it's a great movie. It's, it's one of the great things I find about this, our job, is you, you, know, you after a number of years, you end up working with certain people over and over again. and, and um, it's a beautiful thing. I hope I get to work with Tony again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. 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 Thank you. Thank you both very much. Thank you guys. Thank you. Respect. <laughs>